So one of the more common questions I get when I'm dealing with a client trying to get an X back, especially if they're involved in no contact, is what is the X thinking while I'm being silent? It's a very normal, very strong compulsion to wonder if you're making it worse, if it's having any effect. And a lot of times in the beginning stage of no contact, you're not going to get the feedback. You're not going to get the signs that you're really looking for to tell you that it's actually triggering reattraction. So it's a very normal, strong compulsion to wonder if you're doing something wrong. What are they thinking? This video is to explain that. Jumping right in. The first thing they're going to feel, you've probably heard this before, is going to be relief. Look, even if they were crying when they broke up with you, I'm going to start with that one because it's not necessarily a normal thing. But if the ex broke up with you and they were crying when they did it, they were confused, then it's going to confuse you. And in those situations where they're not excited to, they're not clearly demonstrating excitement, they're not clearly showing a sign of relief, they're actually showing a confusing sign of being unsure. And that triggers inside of you this desire to fight for the relationship. Well, when they broke up with me, they didn't even seem sure. So I feel like I should reach out. I feel like they're testing me. I feel like I hear this one a lot of times. They broke up with me and I think, I think they're just proud. I think because they broke up with me, now they're afraid that even if they want me back, maybe I don't want them. So I need to keep reaching out to them to let them know I'm still fighting for this relationship. Whatever your reasoning, it's a very strong natural compulsion to wonder if you're making a mistake being in no contact. The vast majority of the time, they're going to show relief. Because even if the breakup was painful, there were, there were things happening. There were principles or there were events that led up to them breaking up with you, even if you didn't know it. Maybe the attraction was being drained over time and you didn't even see it coming. Maybe it was a surprise breakup. Maybe you found out that there was a problem the same time you found out the relationship was over. Those can be harder to deal with. And because the pain doesn't match the understanding, you have an even stronger compulsion to figure out what's going on. You have an even stronger compulsion to reach out just to try to get what they call closure or more understanding. Whatever the case, in the majority of the time, they're going to have a relief state. Now, that relief state is going to be because they did something painful, even if they were upset when they broke up with you. Sometimes, especially if they were upset when they broke up with you, because they were probably dreading it. Nobody enjoys that moment. I mean, think about yourself when you had to break up with somebody, even if you were positive that you wanted to break up, you probably weren't looking forward to that moment. They weren't looking forward to it either. Now they have it behind them. Now that sense of relief can be really painful for you to watch. And if you're dealing with somebody that sometimes it can be even exaggerated in cases where the person broke up with you and they immediately start dating someone else, or if they're borderline, or if they're like narcissist, a lot of times there are certain situations where that relief is magnified. Somebody that started dating somebody else or somebody wrestling with borderline a lot of times when they break up with you, it's not just going to be a sense of relief. The painful thing is they're going to show a sense of excitement. To them, it's going to seem like you're the marking of the end of a chapter. It's like now that they've broken up with you and they found somebody else or they've broken up with you and they used to think of you as unattainable. They used to think of you as too good for them. Well, now they just had the experience of not only catching the person that was too good for them, a person that they may have considered out of their league for a really long time. Imagine how strong they must feel now to realize they were the one that broke up with you. Not only were they strong enough to catch your heart, in the end, they've grown into this person who's strong enough to realize they don't want to be with you. As painful as that is, a lot of times you'll see your ex not only get a sense of relief, but a sense of excitement. And again, if they started dating somebody else, well, that new person marks the beginning of a new chapter, a new era in their life right? It's this new sense of strength. It's a lot of times it's this new sense of identity. And one of the things that can really throw you for a loop is when you see your ex not only get that sense of relief, but that sense of being re recharged, like they have a new level of enthusiasm for their own life. And it feels like, wow, was I, was I an anchor in your life? Was I weighing you down? Were you really so unhappy when we were together? How can you act this way? Take a deep breath. And remember, how they feel in the moment isn't necessarily true about how they feel about you long term or overall, right? In the moment, feelings can seem very true, but feelings are real. That doesn't necessarily make them true. In other words, in the moment, they might, act, they might actually feel relief, excitement, even like this unbridled, like I can't wait to start this new stage of my life because they've in part left you behind. Don't let that rattle you into thinking that that's the way it's going to be forever. Like sometimes they don't come back. But even in the cases where they come back, and they come back a lot more than people realize, they usually went through that stage where the person that broke up with you felt excited and relief to leave you behind. So don't let that moment shake you too much. 
The second stage that they get is what they call either the curiosity stage or sometimes I call it the questioning stage. Now, this happens a lot more than people are a lot more than people realize, especially when they just experienced that that stage where they got to the beginning stage where they see their ex is excited. It seems like if they're excited, they're never going to second guess losing me. I mean, they seem happy. They're, they're posting pictures. They're going out with their friends. They're showing pictures of this new person that they're now madly in love with. I, it looks like they're going to be getting engaged any time. I'm expecting a wedding announcement. They're not going to miss me. Look, that, that stage was just that stage. But there's, some, there's something about how we're all wired that we don't think about a lot of times, especially when we're in pain. There's a certain primal part of us that when we get a consistent sense of value, a consistent sense of worth and meaning and importance from somebody on an ongoing basis, and then they stop giving it to us. Unless you're wired like a sociopath, a psychopath, then you're actually going to hurt when a person that has been showing a pattern of love for you and giving you a sense of worth and value suddenly stops. That's because we're made up of feelings a lot more than we realize. We think we're logical creatures. We think, well, they broke up with me. They don't want me. They're dating somebody else. They don't want me. They're excited about their new stage of life. They don't want me. Well, a lot of times they can feel that way because they know you want them. So if you can make it through that first stage where they feel relief or excitement from having left you behind, if you don't pursue, if you're not consistently giving them that sense of importance and that consistent sense of value that they've become accustomed to, whether they know it or not, they've become accustomed to it. So if you can endure that first stage and stay strong in no contact, project strength without expecting yourself to feel it. As a matter of fact, embrace the hurt. Look at the hurt as evidence that you feel things to an authentic level. Don't take the pain as evidence that you're weak. Don't listen to the comments below that say stupid things like, I don't know why you want somebody that doesn't want you. And that sounds logical, but that's not how we're wired. Just because the person doesn't want you anymore doesn't mean you're suddenly inauthentic and insincere and that because they're acting like they don't love you that you suddenly stop loving them. If you're a real, sincere, authentic person with depth, it's supposed to hurt. That's not evidence of weakness or brokenness. That's just evidence that you're somebody that can be trusted. You probably have a good heart. So don't push it away. Embrace the hurt, but live on the outside with strength. Project resilience. Stay in no contact, but don't give in to send these little smoke signals. Don't like comments. Don't check with their friends. Don't have your friends reach out to their friends to let them know that you're still available and you still miss them and you still like to have a conversation. If you can refrain from sending them little smoke signals, little signs that you're still available, then when they get out of that relief slash excited stage from leaving you behind, they're going to notice that somebody who used to give them a consistent sense of value has stopped. And it creates this compulsion. It's how we're wired. It's instinctive. Suddenly somebody who wanted us and who's wanted us for a while, they don't seem to be showing those signs. Even if they're dating somebody else, but they might not admit it. If they're in another relationship, if they're in the middle of that rebound, they're probably not going to reach out to you right in the middle of that new romance and say, hey, I'm really having a great time with this new person I'm with, but I do have moments when I think about you. I do have moments when it hurts, and I do have moments when I wonder why you're not reaching out to me. A lot of times they're not going to tell you, but if they're human, if the relationship you had with them was good, if they're not sociopathic or psychopathic, they miss you. That's, that's just how we're wired. You just might not see the sign of it. But maintain that no contact. Keep giving them the sense of your loss. A lot of times I use the metaphor. If your relationship is like a house and they break up with you, don't emotionally stay on the porch. The closer you stay to the person, the more you make it impossible for them to get a sense of loss because they know you're not really gone. If you stay in no contact through that first stage, the second stage will hit them. And it's that questioning stage. It's the curiosity stage. Why haven't they reached out? In the middle of this stage, a lot of times they'll find a reason to leave a little comment. They'll find a reason. Maybe they reach out to your mom. Maybe they reach out to your best friend. Maybe they reach out to you to ask you a question that they don't really have to ask you. Like I, I had one client say, she just reached out to me and said, do you still have my phone charger? And it was the most basic form of a phone charger. It wasn't like this, you know, this unique phone that needs this unique charger with this unique outlet. It was just a charger. The kind you probably have three of laying around your house right now while you're watching this video. So why did she reach out to him? Because she wanted to know. She wanted him to say, yeah, I've got it. Do you want me to bring it by? Yeah, I've got it. I can send it to you. You don't want to meet for coffee? She just wanted to get a sense that he was still available, that he was still interested, that he was still warm to her response. So a lot of times you're going to get this reach out. When you get that reach out, don't don't jump on that opportunity. Don't like, oh, she just she just asked me how my mom was. What I should tell her is my mom's doing really well. Why don't we grab coffee and I'll tell you how my mom's doing. And you can tell me how your sister's doing. 
Maintain that sense of resilience. You can't do this thing where you jump back in so fast that you give them the reassurance they needed. You answer their question. You don't want to relieve that curiosity. You want to be warm, relaxed, but brief. In other words, interact with them like you would interact with somebody that you like a lot, but you don't have romantic interest in. Keep enough of that questioning there that it builds. What's happening is an internal anxiety that maybe they made a mistake and they're a little bit curious about why they're wondering about why they're wondering is starting to build. That leads to the next stage. The next stage we kind of call the concern or the regret, the beginning of regret. It's concern. It's like, well, the internal monologue is very similar to, well, I knew why I didn't want them. And I felt bad that they still wanted me. I mean, the breakup was hard, but I knew I had to do it. But in the moment, they actually felt good. That's right before the release stage. It felt good knowing that the person that, even though they didn't want to be with, that there's a person out there that wants to be with them. Well, now they've gone through the curiosity stage. And even when they tried to send these little smoke signals or they started wondering if they made a mistake, you didn't give them so much reassurance that now they feel strong enough to keep you at a distance. As a matter of fact, around this stage, I recommend going from radio silence to just showing something online. I don't mean a direct reach out. I don't mean a subtle message like don't start playing, you know, the if, if you and your ex had a favorite song, don't start playing that favorite song. You know, don't mention a favorite quote, quote, don't send little signals that you still miss them at this stage. But when they get past that initial stage where they're reaching out to you, show something online that shows that you're still engaged in life. One of the most underrated aspects of creating attraction is letting your ex know that you're still content with your life. You're still living an intriguing life. That's enough for you to be excited about. You like you. You like your friends. You like engaging in your life. You like doing something. I don't care if it's go-karting. I don't care if it's mountain biking, going to a fire pit, doing something with other people that shows you're not at home, brokenhearted. Again, you're not on the porch, just waiting for a chance, hoping that they'll open that front door just a little so you can convince them why the two of you belong together. No, keep projecting that strength. And a lot of times when you get into this stage, it might be around the two to three month mark, right? If they're in another relationship, that rebound relationship puts a little bit of a delay on them coming back. So if they're in that other relationship, but you maintain no contact through the relief and through the curiosity stages, then it's really starting to build. And a lot of times, because you haven't responded, you might have thrown a nice little hand grenade into that new relationship. Because a lot of times, they'll start wondering about the person that's not chasing them. They'll start wondering about you more than they're excited about the new person. Because a lot of times, by that stage, they've had time for the limerence of the new boyfriend or girlfriend to start to fade. Like limerence is when somebody is new, exciting, they seem idealized because you only know their good things, you haven't been with them long enough to recognize the bad, they were forbidden at the beginning because your ex was with you. Well, you give it two or three months and all of a sudden that new rebound relationship, it's not new anymore. It's just the person they're with. They're not forbidden anymore. They're also not idealized. They're not seen as that perfect guy because the reality never lives up to the fairy tale. You know what I mean? When you fantasize, when you start, when you fall into limerence and you start falling into love, it's easy to imagine this new relationship is the one relationship. Well, you're with somebody for any amount of real time and you're going to find out nobody measures up to the fantasy. So if you can maintain no contact and get through those two stages, a lot of times the fact that you haven't chased has helped sabotage that new relationship. In that stage, like I said, pull out of radio silence and just show that you're still engaged in life. If you have friends and family that ask you about your ex, don't give in to the temptation to slip them a message. Well, let them know that I still think about them. Let them know I'd still like to have a, a chance to have a conversation. I still think we could make this work. Project resilience. You don't have to pretend that you don't care. But say something to your friends. Say something to anybody that might interact with your ex. Project strength by saying things like, hey, I'm sorry that it ended that way. It hurt. When I think about her, I think about him. Sometimes, truthfully, it still hurts. But then reinforce your resilience. But I'm glad she told me how she felt. I'm glad he told me that I wasn't the one. Because I don't want to be with anybody that's not excited about being with me. And I'm confident I'll find the right person. And I'm sure they'll find the right person. So, hey, I wish them all the best. You might not mean that, but say it anyway. If you can maintain through that stage, through the, the concern, through the possible regret stage, that's what really starts to lead to reattraction. Or what they kind of, sometimes they'll call it the consequence stage. In other words, now they have a real sense of loss. It's been a long enough time now. You have essentially proven that you're strong enough to live without them. Even if every day during no contact was torment. And look, I, I lived through it. 
I'm not only a relationship coach, I've gone through this before. When I went through it one time, it was three and a half months of no contact. And it was hell. Every day felt like evidence that it wasn't going to work tomorrow. It didn't work today. It didn't work yesterday. This isn't working. I don't think they're missing me at all. I don't see any signs. I see barely. I, I would get like maybe the slightest of comments, the slightest of little hints, but nothing enough to really give me hope. But then when it works, it works. It's not supposed to feel like it's working until it works. No contact for a long period will feel like somebody's telling you to go outside and stare at rocks. Nothing's happening. I'm doing nothing. I'm saying nothing. I'm just letting that person slip further and further away. That's how it feels. But remember, feelings are very real. That doesn't make them true. And a lot of times what feels like staring at rocks, what you might not realize is that under the surface, those earth plates are shifting. Things are happening. That other relationship, if they're in a rebound, it's not going to measure up to perfection. Even if they end up together, in most cases they don't, even if they end up together, that person doesn't live up to the fantasy. So give them time to realize what they've won in that other person. If they're not in a rebound, then there's even more reason to just hang on. That means that they, they're going to be looking for a replacement for that sense of worth and value that you gave them. Even if they took you for granted, you were having an impact on their lives by letting them know that you had feelings for them, by consistently giving them a sense of value. So if you can make it through those stages, that's when the consequences or the reattraction starts to take place. Now, a lot of times, especially guys, they'll say, well, even if she misses me, the problem with no contact is I know her. She's really proud. She, she digs her heels in. Um, she even would tell me when we were together, I've never gone back to a guy after I break up with a guy. I don't second guess myself. I've heard that more times than I can count. Well, take a deep breath and realize most women say that. And in some ways, it's true. But that's because when women come back, all they have to do in most cases, just send you a simple message. Like I have clients that say, I just, I haven't heard from her in a month or two months or three months. And sometimes it's longer. It can be six months. I had a client not long ago. It was 11 months. And you know how the woman came back when she came back? It was a text message on a Saturday at 10 o'clock. Hey, how have you been? Sometimes it's, hi, are you mad at me? Hi, can we talk? Or sometimes it's just hi. So a lot of times when a woman's coming back, they don't come back with this long message explaining everything and why they're wrong and why they're sorry and why they miss you. Sometimes, yes. Most of the time, it's just this shallow, really kind of a small start to a conversation. When they do that, make sure you don't sabotage it. Don't jump back in. And sometimes when you're in no contact, if you've been hyper fixating on every little detail every day, if you're following them online, and every time they, they give you a little sign that they miss you or a little sign that they're in love with somebody else, you're emotionally reacting. You're staying so emotionally invested that when they come back, you're like, you're like a rubber band that's been stretched all the way around the world. And then when they give you a real significant sign that they've been thinking about you, it's like somebody cut that rubber band and that whiplash effect is going to kick into full gear. So consistently frame and practice in your mind. All right. How am I going to respond when I hear from them? I'm going to respond with resilience. I'm going to respond with self-respect. I'm going to respond in a way that projects the strength that I've been projecting while in no contact. And sure, deep down, you might just feel just completely overwhelmed. You might feel almost in a panic with excitement. Oh, and I get this a lot of times. I'll get an email. They reached out. They reached out. I can't believe it. You're right. I can't believe it. What do I do? What do I do? Take a deep breath. They missed you because you showed strength. Remember that person that you like, but you're not mesmerized with. Remember that person that you like, but you're not completely, totally in love with. How would you respond to them? Respond with strength. It doesn't mean you're pretending. It doesn't mean you're being a fake. It just means you're taking a deep breath and choosing to respond in a way that represents the strongest version of yourself. In this stage, a lot of times people think, well, if I don't react in a way that matches up with how I feel, I'm being a fake. I want them to know how much I miss them. I want them to know how much I feel. Well, in most areas in life, you don't actually want to share the intensity or the depth of how you feel. You want to take that intensity and harness it and process it and then project it in a way that's most effective. In other words, if somebody cut me off in traffic, I'm going to get really mad. I have a pretty bad temper. I don't want to let that intensity come out and project a version of me that's actually not true. If I lost my temper and let myself go to that feeling every time, then I'd look like a hothead who shouldn't have a driver's license. So I take that intensity, I focus it, I shape it, and I project a version of me that's mature, that's strong, that represents me in a way that I'm proud to be represented. It's the same way. Like if you're in a relationship and a beautiful incredibly attractive person tries to seduce you, right? Your feelings and how you choose to react to those feelings don't always line up. But in a relationship, for some reason, 
when somebody comes back, a lot of times people feel like I've got to be completely honest. I've got to tell them, hey, I've missed you every day since you've been gone. I've been praying that you'll come back. And now that you're back, can we lock this down? Can we make plans for forever? You undo all the work that you've done. So don't feel weak because you want them back. Don't feel ashamed that you're excited that they're reaching out again. But again, harness that intensity and make sure that the version of you that you're projecting is one that represents the you that has strength, that has a sense of self-reliance, that has a sense of confidence in who he is or who she is. Because that's the version of you that's probably the truest. And that's the one that drew them back. So those are the stages. I'm going to go ahead and say it now to save people the comments in the section below. No, of course it doesn't work every time. But it works a lot more often than people realize. If you're dealing with somebody that's a narcissist, if you're dealing with borderline, then some of these things are going to adjust. It's not a one case fits all kind of a situation. If the reason they left is because you like in, you, there was some kind of a unusual event, maybe you deeply betrayed them. Maybe you were really abusive. So the more extreme situations make those situations a little bit harder to predict. So I hope this has been useful. If you start to feel overwhelmed, just kind of put this on play and listen. You'll find a lot of what I'm describing is going to match up with what you're going through. And sometimes just knowing what you're doing does work. And understanding that that overwhelming feeling of anxiety and regret that you're having, that maybe you're doing the wrong thing. Don't fight that feeling, but don't trust that feeling either. All right. Thanks a lot. Please give me a like and subscribe if you want more content like this. And I'll talk to you again soon.